and I am the rook. You are the fire, and I burn like a book. Don't know how this one ends till I die. And the honest part of reliable is the lie. The greater the power, the more the abuse. You are the hand, I worship the bruise. If romance is dead, I guess I'm a necrophiliac. But every god needs a sacrifice. I am the cross, and you are the Christ. So I. Drink. So disgusting. I'm sorry. Oh my god. No, I am nasty, fun. babe. Babe, babe, babe. I'm disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Mother's Mayhem, nerds. <laughs> Post COVID immune system trying to wake up. Episode. Well, friends, please, my children, help me welcome. This is again not Christina. This is not Christina. This an excellent guest co-host placement. This is Allie Sweet. Straight out of Scotia. Straight, for having me. Straight out of Nova Scotia. So Allie and I, Allie flew like 19 hours <laughs> to go to AuthorCon back in April. And I was at AuthorCon and Allie and I hadn't really interacted very much and didn't even really interact at AuthorCon very much. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those things where we both knew that the other was there and yet never actually <laughs> were able to get to each other because what a freaking wild experience this shindig was oh my god i still don't believe it actually happens sometimes i know right sometimes Did you... i think it was just all in my mind i so ali is joining me today because the guests that we have when I knew these were the people I would be talking to this weekend and I knew I had to find somebody to sit in for Christina. It's funny how every time I have a certain guest, like a certain fellow book reviewer or fan pops into my mind. And this weekend it was Jeff Strand and Bridget Nelson. And I was like, I wonder if Allie Sweet will do this with me. <laughs> She's the perfect person. And so I went to her and she very graciously agreed to do so. Did you go to the Saturday night uh, author con party where they were all reading excerpts from their stories? Oh, so, I did. oh my God. So Allie and I had the joyous, uh, opportunity to watch Jeff Strand who we'll be talking to today read his short story what is it weird oh my crazy god crazy Ralph's used car Crazy, yeah crazy Ralph's used car for him we saw him do this live I have not laughed so hard in such a long time I couldn't feel my face from smiling so much like I couldn't feel my cheeks Oh my so hard. God. Oh my God. It was freaking hilarious. This short story that he read at AuthorCon is available in his newest collection, Freaky Briefs, which is officially on my top 10 favorite reads of 2022. Now, the funny oh thing it oh my God, it's so yeah. funny. It's 75 short stories, and it is fucking hilarious. Oh my yeah, God. But he's such, he's so, such a genius because he does horror and comedy at the same time. And, and, and oh, it's like seamless. The entertainment so value is off the charts. Now, we have Bridget Nelson with him here today. They have almost become like a symbiotic creature. When it comes yeah. to like public appearances, where does one start and the other one end? Nobody knows. Right, right. Yeah. One cannot exist without the other at this point. So 
all the way back at AuthorCon. She was there with him. And I had no idea who she was. Because I mm-hmm. think a bouquet of viscera had like just dropped. And I hadn't even really heard about mm-hmm. it yet. So I'm going down the hallway of the hotel back to my room to drop off books. And as I'm coming down the hallway, I see who I believe is potentially Jeff Strand walking with two people. And in my mind, I was like, do you say something? Do you say something? No, you can't say anything. You're really super awkward. You can't. No, leave him alone. Leave him alone. And then... (laughs) I literally passed them, stopped, turned around, <laughs> and said, I'm so sorry, but are you Jeff Strand? <laughs> and he turned around, and he was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I love you. <laughs> Can I have a picture with you? And this really sweet super lady that was walking with him, she was so pretty and she was just so pleasant and so adorable. She was like, oh, honey, she was like, can I take this picture for you? She was like, give me your phone. I was like, absolutely. So I have this picture of me with Jeff Strand where I am grinning like a four-year-old who just got peanut butter cups. And the person who took this picture was Bridget Nelson. <laughs> and I had no idea at the time oh, that the person taking this picture of me and Jeff Strand was was the person who wrote the book that would officially be my number three most favorite read of 2022. That's amazing. I, I, I have this picture and now I'm like, I remember this situation where I was with Jeff Strand. I was like, I got to meet Jeff Strand. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, Bridget Nelson took that picture. <laughs> That's amazing. I you love that so much. Absolute dipshit. <laughs> And then that no, night, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. At the Saturday night party where we were all hanging out, I was like pregnant and exhausted because I think I was like five weeks at that point. So he, I was like, Ugh. and I was sitting down in the front row and they're all like drinking and laughing. And I'm sitting there and I'm like watching and this beautiful woman comes and sits next to me. And she's so pleasant. And she's so sweet. And we're just like chatting it up fucking Bridget Nelson I fucking love that Bridget that. Nelson Allie <laughs> she's like hi I'm Bridget yeah <laughs> did Bridget Nelson take that picture <laughs> no I did. I did I didn't know who Bridget was I don't okay look, look these are all my like author con selfies I like accosted everybody right obviously um and but there isn't one with Bridget because I didn't know who she was I yet didn't at all. Know who she was? I, I didn't said. know, and now I don't know how I didn't know. I know, and I feel terrible. Like I want to warn her at this point that, like, okay, at that point, we hadn't read your book. There wasn't a lot of marketing. We hadn't heard a ton about it. We met this nice lady who was like really sweet and super. Now we've read your book. Now we know exactly who you are. Just say, but, and now we're going to be on you like white on rice. Like I'm trying to figure out how to frame this as if like. (laughs) As if we're not insane. Right. Right. Because (laughs) next time I'm going to be like, I need 10 pictures with you. and We're going to make Jeff Strand take all of them. Take him. (laughs) (laughs) Jeff's out. Bridget's in. Right. We have Jeff no, Strand on not. Mothers of Mayhem no, today, and he's going to be like, well, I, and we're going to be like, oh, sh- sh- sh. let the Bridget speak. Bridget speak. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay, talking about, like, her saying, like, how, like, strangely, like, things just kind of, like, happen in certain times. So I saw a review of Bridget's book, or she posted about Ronald Kelly writing yeah, the forward or like yeah. something. Anyways, I saw a post 
And I was like, oh my God, bouquet of viscera. I haven't gotten to it. I haven't gotten to it. Like I need to read it. I need to read it. Raving reviews. All the people whose books I read, like reviewers that I follow are like, gotta read it, gotta read it, gotta read it. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Right. Famous last words. So I saw it and I like commented on it or something, or I went and bought it or I just bought it. And then I saw it. So then I commented on it. And I was like, I had, I have, I'm going to read it. Like I'm going to read it like ASAP. And Bridget commented back and was like, I didn't know you had it. Like, yay, read it. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I'm going to. And then literally days later or that day, even you were like, Hey, I'm going to have Jeff Strand and Bridget on my podcast. Do you want to guest co-host? And I was like, yes. And then I immediately obviously had to read it. So I think Monday I started it and then I like finished it yesterday. I yeah. I was so awkward about Bridget and Jeff at AuthorCon. You know, I never stopped at Jeff's table. Oh my God, I did. I went right over and I was like, you're Jeff Strand and I know exactly who you are and I'm going to take pictures with you and buy so many of your books. <laughs> he was just like, okay. I I was so awkward and so starstruck. I never went back to his table after the interaction <laughs> that we had in the hall. I could no, he's gonna listen to this and be like, she's such a nerd. I was so, I was so feeling so dumb about our Holly attraction. I never went back to his table. I have everybody who was at AuthorCon who wrote short stories for the Baker's Dozen from Uncomfortably Dark yeah. and the Snow. I got all of them to sign their short stories. It's so just strand because I felt like such a dork. You should have just and it's like brought the book, covered your face, and been like sign here. Sign and here. Like, sign. Not let them know who it was. Sign here, please. <laughs> I was so I took we um we interviewed Triana last weekend, me and Sonia, who was at AuthorCon with me. And it took me over 24 hours to just build up the confidence and the courage to walk up to Triana's table. Every time I would pass him, I, I would be like, I like your dog. And I would run away. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I would like not make eye contact with him. I would be like, your dog's pretty. <laughs> I definitely saw him, but I also didn't know who he was yet. Then I didn't know who he was yet. And I did see him. Like, how could you not see him? I was like, oh, hello. Um, <laughs> but I definitely didn't have the nerve to go up and say hi or anything. Isn't and, that like, crazy? Just... It's so funny because they're always like, um, oh, well, we're just regular people. And yeah. I'm like, but you're and I'm like, but you're not yeah. though. You know, <laughs> you're not you're not to us you're You're a regular old irregular person to me (laughs) yeah yeah to me you're very intimidating these are my heroes man it's crazy i know right so when you finally i know you just messaged me a couple days and you were a, a couple days ago and you were like i i'm just finishing it up oh you had just read jinx yeah, out of I was ju- day of this. Yes, I just finished it, and so that's the second last one, right? So then, what's the yes! last one? The last that, one was uh, also crazy. The show must go. Oh, on. the show must go on. The yeah. Hollywood one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> Listen, they were all good. They were all good. Every single one of them was like better than good. They were all so good. But I... the show must go on. I, I was rooting. I was rooting for Lana. Why? Why was I rooting for Lana? I don't. <laughs> what? D- d- I, oh my god. Oh. I'm like, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to use up I know, all my I, fangirl I, vomit for me neither like, just yet. But I have so much to say about this to her. Oh this god. is another uh instant where we're gonna be like, all right, Jeff Strand, take a nap. <laughs> like how much time do we have how much time we do have we as have much time as we want until oh, they're okay. like look so i really have to go really gotta go because <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. i was gonna say poor jeff won't have a chance um but yeah no with the show must go on i was like i would how are we with spoilers am i not supposed to mention spoilers 
is there i was trying to figure out okay like, how, do we exp- how do we explain this one without okay. giving it all yeah. away same you with can't. jinx you can't because jinx i think is yeah. one of the standout stories simply because as people read it they have very strong reactions to that one mm-hmm. which is 100 percent justified you know we oh, yeah. all have that joke about like closing a book and throwing it across the room that was the first time I actually wanted to like <laughs> I was at the community pool with my children and I almost chucked this thing right into the deep end. <laughs> now j- yeah Jinx just it broke all the rules it, it broke does. all the traditional literary rules for a story with that plot and theme. So like wild. With that type of plot and theme, like I mean, like. It's funny how even with horror, we as the reader, and I don't, maybe this is just a natural human thing. I don't know. You got to tell me what you think. But isn't it like deep down inside, we still either expect or desire all of those stories to have happy endings? Okay, so yes and no. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. So if written well, I love me an unhappy ending. I don't like when it's just kind of like done and you're like, okay, you were trying to go for like a thing and it didn't really land. Um, But when a story is written so like effectively, like Jinx, for example, I almost wasn't even mad. Like you wanted to throw the book in the pool and I closed the book. Yeah. And I closed the book and I was like, fuck those motherfuckers. (laughs) But I was like, but this is real life. But that's real life. That's what makes life horrible. She's like, she just, she just hit peak horror. I don't think slapped in the face. That is the most terrible. It's the most terrifying thing that I could probably ever picture happening to myself from start to finish. I love so, revenge. Like if it had a happy ending, I, me too. Me too. That whole and if it vibe. Had had a happy ending, I would be like, okay, great. Like that would have been good too. Right? I would have been like, oh, this is exactly. Mm. And the whole vibe of it was, I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then, and I had to check myself because I was like, no, that's what real horror, like she just, I just got slapped in the face with a giant mutant hand of horror. <laughs> yeah. Like, boom, yeah. get a grip. Life ain't fair. Everything sucks. <laughs> so when I was reading it, the first story was great. I can't remember what they all were or whatever, but. Like oh in the God. orders. Yes. But yes, 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 yes. Auras. I should, I should the one of the lady who can see the auras around people and like yes. the different colors oh that people are more oh evil. My God. I know, I know. Ah! That was the first one. And like, as soon as I read the last sentence, I was just like, okay, buckle the fuck up. Right? I so guess. that's what Next. we're here for. <laughs> okay. That's oh. what we're here about. Okay. Oh I was like, okay, okay, we're we're hitting the ground running here. All right. And then what was the next one? Political suicide. That's yes. the one where I was just like, oh shit. Oh shit. Okay, I get it now. I get it. This is gonna be a fucking wild ride. I was like, oh my god. You know what ended up being one of my absolute yeah. favorite stories in this collection? And it's funny because this isn't usually the way I would 100 percent go. Uh, body horror and creature features aren't usually like my biggest jam. She does splatterpunk brilliantly in this thing and just extreme horror transgressive fiction in general, but spores. Yeah, me too. I wrote that one down. That it's like ni- story... ni- nightmare fuel, man. Nightmare fuel. Body horror at its best. And no, then at its most insane. What's the one with the the and Floyd, 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 the, the, the St. Floyd. Bernard, and the one yeah. with the sea creature, like the giant lake creature. 
with the oh, cage the eel that go- thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Cra- I don't usually go in for creature features, but that was one that reminded me. I think it's Invaders. I think you're right. Yeah, it is Invader. That one reminded me so much of um the story Stephen King wrote about the kids who go out on the lake on the raft and the like pool the like oil slick like thing comes up and like starts coming up under the- oh my god <laughs> it's that classic like we're oh, stuck like in the water oh my god but I, well, I just there's just so much in here that I mm, I I've literally it was like June or July oh, I finally read this girl book, and I once know. I read it I was like holy shit I have been so, sleeping on this, this so hard for me it was so busy <laughs> Oh, I I could, I'm so glad that I literally finished it and now literally get to yell at Bridget about it. Like I'm so <laughs> beyond so good, no idea. This past week was so busy for me. I was not gonna fit in a, a read. I wasn't fitting in a read at all. There was no chance of it whatsoever, and I did get it done <laughs> because I couldn't stop. It, like I didn't do things I was supposed to. Good I for you, it. and not because I was going to interview her, because I literally could have. That's called effective prioritization. You did good. I, I, I have no regrets. I have no regrets. I, None whatsoever. You should not. <laughs> <sighs> this was the same problem I had when I had to interview Brian Keene. Because Brian Keene has like over 50 novels, novellas, novelettes, and collections. And I like to get really specific about certain things that people have written. And I went into Jeff Strand's list and counted out this man has 46 novels, novellas, and (laughs) collections. Collections. And I've read a few of them and I was like, there's way too much here for me to really start pinpointing like any one thing. Plus, the same with Brian Keene. They write screenplays. They write for television. They write for movies. They write for all kinds of other stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like, oh my God, it's just, it's so much. It's so much. So forgive me, folks, if our questions for Jeff Strand are a little bit more generalized because the man's bibliography is massive. massive. <laughs> I'm like- looking at three of his books right now on my bookshelf. Cyclops Road, Ferocious. And autumn bleeds into winter. I bought them all at AuthorCon from him, just freaking out, being like, "Give me everything." Ferocious. I haven't read any of them. Is the zombie the zombie animals right? The zombie bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, I haven't yes, read it yet. Yes, yes, yes. But like, I've also read tons of things by him: the Haunted Forest Tour, Clowns vs. Spiders, which were both horror comedy, which were both that. That's what made me fall in love with Jeff Strand. Was I think? I, yeah, I read the Haunted Forest Tour, and, and who is that with? James? Somebody? Is somebody James? He co-wrote it with somebody or something. Oh, gosh. I don't know. The Haunted Forest or I don't know. Anyways. um, And uh, yeah, anyways. So I immediately like searched him on Goodreads after I read that and then found Clowns vs. Spiders, which was so horrific and hilarious. So good. So good. And I was like, mm, love this guy. He's and brilliant. then I just went down a rabbit hole and I don't even know what else I read by him. Honestly, I probably should have prepared for this. But, um. <laughs> You're doing fine. You're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit tunnel visioned on Bouquet of Viscera. I won't. <laughs> I know. It's hard. Right? I'm like, we have le- legendary Jeff Strand on the show today, which is great. But we have Bridget Nelson, mm-hmm. who's written one book. <laughs> and we're like, we're like, we're like, she's going to talk to us. <laughs> So the people, they always get a chance to hear about what I'm reading. And honestly, I I relate to your last week where it, like with everything that I've got going on, I have not been reading at my u- usual pace. Mm-hmm. So out of everything you've read over this past year, do you have a list of some of your favorite 2022 reads? They don't have to be written in 2022. Oh, God, things no, you've yeah. read this year that really rocked your socks what do you got for yeah. us yeah so i've read 69 books so far <gasps> oh my god and, i know which is actually 
I think I'm like behind schedule. Holy from last shit. Year. I don't know. Or maybe I'm above schedule. I don't know. I honestly, I don't keep track of it stuff like so crazily right i'm just I like can't. Let's read it. i will Next constantly book, read it like i'm myself. like oh i would be so neurotic yeah I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't. okay so <laughs> i did go and look at my reads from this year so far um and i don't think i could pick it's hard isn't pick it one favorite. You don't have to. You can give me because, like five, six, okay, seven. Okay, what are okay. your faves? People, okay. people One, want two, three, to four, irrationally five, six, seven, eight, and irresponsibly buy books, Allie. They want oh, yeah, to gotta... irresponsibly buy books. Give them books to irresponsibly purchase. Okay. <laughs> so if we're talking, if we're talking names, we probably know already. So I read Only Psychos and Left to You, Daniel. both by Daniel. I haven't had a chance to read and, Only Psychos yet. Is this so good? Okay. Yes. So Left to You obviously is its own thing. And Only Psychos is, could not be the more opposite story. And they both are like this for me. Wow. Which is like, must say something about me and my insane brain. Um, Carver Pike, I read Scalp, which... So I bought that from him at OfferCon. And when I was talking to him, I was like, okay, what should I get? Like, which one should I buy? Like, I don't even know what to get from you, whatever. And then he's like, I don't know if he used to do the scalp or whatever, but it came up that I was like, you gross bugs, lice, fuck that shit. Don't want nothing to do with it. He's like, then you have to get that one. And I was like, but no. And he's like, but it'll be fine. You'll be fine. And I'm like, no, but no, I hate it already and he's like well here you go and like that's what I bought from him and then I actually I bought a couple there's some more on there grad night something else anyway oh grad grad night and scalp are like two of his best oh my god yeah so I haven't read grad night yet sorry Carver but yeah no scalp was it's maybe as a top contender to be honest it was phenomenal and because I went into it being like I'm gonna hate this so much and it's going to make me want to die. And it didn't. And I loved it. And it was so not what I would normally read to. So I don't know. That was, that was I know. Big, big so surprise. I went into that one. Ooh, it, the- and it wasn't really something that I'm interested in either. But usually that pulls me in. But for those of you who are not aware, Scalp is basically about these like mutant lice that will like turn you into a zombie. Almost they like control your brain. Brain, Oh my God, it's so good. (laughs) I know. Like like, when I read the synopsis, I was like, that's a hard no. Next. Never thought of it again. (laughs) That ain't my damn. And then that's what I ended up buying, (laughs) reading and loving the most from him so far. So So great. It's, It's really strange what... I've I've said this like a lot lately, but I feel like it's like important thing to like recognize is that the exact moment in time that you read a book matters. Oh my like, god. I yes. fully believe that. So like I could like pull a book off that sounds amazing and re- right up my alley and I open it and I'm just like, no, not right now. And then pull something else out that I'm like, oh yeah, that one that I said I would never read, but Marion was like read it so now I will and I'm like oh my god like it all matters on like where you are in life what you're doing your mood like literally everything oh hell yeah I actually talked a little yeah. bit about and that was last like that year for me, for some yeah last week last year coming right yeah. out of the pandemic like just as things were starting to open up again not last year god almost two years ago now oh my god i read jose saramago's blindness which is about like a global pandemic that like (laughs) destroys society on like an interpersonal level like human to human level (laughs) and if i had read it at any other time i don't think it would have blown my mind the way it did but i was like oh my god this is exactly the way things could have gone like i totally could have seen it yeah that we were so close so close to it being just like this so you are so right (laughs) which makes that more terrifying yeah if you had said that like six years ago you'd have been like okay cool Uh, that could never happen whatever god it would totally happen we were so close to that happening what else you got what else you got okay 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 so 
I read The Black Farm. Oh! Have you read The Black Farm? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I have the second one and cannot bring myself to read it yet. I'm waiting for that specific mood where I can handle reading the second one. I don't because know this, if I want to go This in book there fucked again. me up so hard. This book was fucking brilliant. Sonia right? and I talked about this one on the last episode with Triana. This book. Holy shit. And I heard that the second one is more devastating. And I don't know if I want to so, go back to this place. I know. Every and it's literally called Return to the Black Farm. And I'm like, no thanks. Why would we? Um, why would we why do, would that? I do that? <laughs> why would why why would we ever do that? I like want to, but I the don't point, want to. The point is to get out. <laughs> only. That is the only point of that place existing is to not be there. This is absolutely. But I have to. I have to. I'm I need to it. know how do you get sucked back in? How do you end up there again? What existential nightmarish journey are we going on now? Why? Why are we going on another journey like that? Like, That's is it the horrible. same characters? Yeah, I don't know. Is it the same characters, and do they choose to go back? Because fuck that. Uh, Why would you no- ever? Why would you ever? Huh, huh, this book. I slept. I felt like I slept on this one so hard. Both of these, I felt like I slept on them so hard. And by the time I got to them, I was like, "Well, I'm an idiot." <laughs> I did. I Let's, slept on both of them so hard. Yeah. I think I read them back to back too. I think I read this one and then went right into the black fire. I know, right? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's, why would you do that to yourself? I, I guess you I, did, maybe didn't know. I had no idea. About Bouquet of Visser. I had no idea Bouquet of Visser was going to be that. Me neither. I, I did didn't not. Even, I, I didn't. Not, no, I wasn't prepared. Same with the black farm. Like, I had heard black the farm black too. farm was brutal and that it was devastating and hard. I had no idea okay i read gone to see the river man by triana <gasps> and then the black farm oh well that's a combo right there yeah did you and already have a therapist or did you get a therapist after <laughs> no i have been, i have not been helped since i started reading these novels honey <laughs> if you know a good one please send it my way i will i will <laughs> Yeah, like I feel like that's what AuthorCon next year is gonna be. Is just gonna be this like mad group therapy session of us all like processing all of these novels that we have read from like April till March. God <laughs> well, almighty. Like, good luck to those authors. Like if any of you are watching this, like I apologize in advance and will not apologize when I get there again. <laughs> Right, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be me and Allie walking up to people's tables, going, "Hi, nice to meet you. You fucked me up, man. You fucked me up so bad." <laughs> yeah, I honestly can't wait to read my next Volpe book so I can put out a new episode of <laughs> Things I Say to Volpe after yeah. I read this fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy is probably scared to check his inbox. <laughs> I I love the concept of only psychos. It's been in my list forever because that idea of the family being stuck in a hotel full of horrible people and having to figure out how Which to survive. Is nothing. That situation. doesn't that doesn't touch the book. Oh my it god! Doesn't touch the book. <gasps> what you read about it is nothing. You okay. honestly bump it. I I a hundred percent tell you to bump okay. it. Okay. Do you do it's you find so yourself like me getting so it's far behind short. that you you oh, finally so go? You're so far behind on the TBR. You finally are like, I have the motivation and the time to read again, and you go to pick up a book, and you're like, huh, and you don't even know which one to pick. Like you have no idea. There's so many. You're like, but I really want that one, and I really want the that one. The last time that happened, I, really I want spinny that wheeled one. it. I did like a spin, random spinny wheel. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, okay. Yeah. It but did, then it my worked. brain is like, ah. Oh, but then I don't know. Maybe the wheel is wrong. No, but then, <laughs> but then it's but as long as it gets you to a decision, it doesn't matter if you read the one the wheel picks. 
the point is it just pushes your hand, right? So if you can narrow it down to like two, and you put the two on the wheel and then the wheel spins and it tells you this one and you're like, nope, it's this one. Like you'll know, right? That's a good Whether idea. the wheel picks or you pick, like you'll know. That's yeah. a good idea. It worked for me. It won't work for everybody, but it definitely did work for me. I got the new anthology from Uncomfortably Dark. Baker's Dozen was for me the number one multi-author anthology of 2021. Absolutely fucking genius i wish someone would turn it into a television series yes me too. it would be an amazing it's the hard anthology have you seen hard- yes i have that one that's the one i was running around with the black pages beautiful? it's amazing i didn't bring it with me why oh. why didn't i bring it with me next i year. had oh, her man, bring one year. for me i i was like candace bring one for me i'll pay you a painter yeah. <laughs> That's Jeff's. This There's is your Jeff's. one blank page. That's, what That's your one blank page. Because I was too. Okay. So, so, okay, here's the story. So, this, mm. I won this on a giveaway that Candace Whoa. did on Books of Horror. I don't know. But, like, this is like the best thing you could ever win in a giveaway. And I don't oh, think yes. if I ever won again, it couldn't be anything that cool. So, this book introduced me first of all to Candace Nola didn't know who she was same would marry her if she asked 100% absolutely same. so it also introduced me to the gore for I didn't know who <gasps> Daniel the and gore boys. and any yeah I didn't know like Carver Aaron none of them so then I like looked them up got obsessed obviously <laughs> Ruth Ann, Ruth Ann, Jag, and then and that, that basically story. Ruth Ann, Jag. Oh yeah, yeah the Honestly, Pie Ronald Bursey the, is just like one of my favorites, man. Roland, I find myself thinking about Roland Bursey's story from that collection all the time, randomly. All the time. That weird plant that she plants in her backyard, and and Pretzels of God by Christine Morgan. I. I, I, oh yeah I, I, I immediately it was one of those times where like my anxiety I didn't even have time to kick in I went straight to Facebook messenger found Christine Morgan and a message okay. I was like this is one of the best short stories I've ever read in my life I immediately bought my sister a copy of the anthology because I knew just based on that one story she was going to be right here with me and like, this is the best thing I've ever fucking read. It's so good. It's so good. It is so, so good. Honestly, for anyone who hasn't read this yet, the stories are friggin' amazing. It's all like, n- like notable worthy, like yeah. no- noteworthy. Yeah. Authors. Okay, whatever. Anyways, you should know these authors if you don't. Um, but one of the coolest parts of this is the questions at the end the dark cousin questions at the end of each story so candace had them answer questions about themselves like darkest horror movie ever watched darkest worst way to die or whatever oh let's find jeff oh yeah that's a good idea she so graciously just sent me the newest dark dozen anthology and i know it's gonna be off the charts it's gonna be like a home I want run it. hitter yeah i want it so bad and i have and like it's literally to have it in my phone all i have to do is bring it up and yeah i like i have it like i'm just my brain <laughs> i know it's there no i totally get it i totally get it as a reader i made a post about this recently that i was like it was, yeah, whatever. I saw a meme or I don't know how it came up, but whatever. It was like avid readers. We either buy a book and read it immediately or buy a book and leave it on the shelf for 500 years because you don't yes. want to read it. Like you, Because once you read it, you can't read it for the first time again. You can't go back. And I do that with, I do that with Daniel so bad. And he literally shamed me publicly online about it. Because he was like, yeah, Allie claims to be such a fan, but she doesn't fucking read anything. <laughs> I was like, I, I feel, feel the same to read. Oh, way. God. I feel the same <gasps> way. I, I, and <laughs> I'm like, look, 
when I go into your books, I want to be able to put my best brain forward. <laughs> or, or you want to wait for a time when you're just like so depressed or like so in a slump or like whatever that I'm like, you know what? Let Daniel talk to me for a minute, you know? And then yes. you can like go get that voice that like is so comfortable or whatever that you like actually want to hear. Oh, okay, hold I'm on. I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, I'm I think there's so more of us out there the than one. you would think. Oh, yeah, there's more of us out there that are like such weirdos. I wish <laughs> I could abandon. I wish I could abandon my actual like career life and just read and do this. <laughs> okay, what's and the one thing TikToks. that scares? Yeah. Oh my God. I got to get back into TikTok. Oh, I amazing. did TikTok during lockdown, but that was it. And this is that's like, how it all don't started. Go, don't for go me look me up. Do not. But, I haven't okay. made it TikTok. This is in the like one thing weeks. that's okay. This is the one thing that scares <laughs> Jeff Strand most in the entire world. I'm taking notes. Most in the entire world. Sharks with spider legs. Sharks with spider legs. I regret not looking that up prior to bringing him in here, which I am about to do. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have drawn a shark with spider legs. Oh my god, I can't draw. <laughs> and then you just hold it up to the camera. <laughs> hey, straight. I don't even know what a we shark heard, looks like. We heard you really. Did you just say, I don't even know what a shark looks like? <laughs> <laughs> I just got so excited I completely lost all knowledge of what sea animals look like <laughs> alright Allie is going to draw us a shark with spider legs and when we come back we will have both some some type of shark ish spider hybrid creature and Jeff Strand and Bridget Nelson we'll be right back Spider legs. Come on, Google, don't fail me. Now. <laughs> okay, what do we got? <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, this, this, this looks... Oh no, Bridget. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's in for. Shark with spider legs. Okay, here we go. Come Nine on, Google, eight. don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bridget. Hi, you guys. Wait, wow, you're so fucking gorgeous. Look at you. Uh, thanks. <laughs> hey. I, was, I was telling this story. <laughs> I have two Bridget centric stories from AuthorCon that I just told in the intro. But now I will never forget you came and you so sweetly sat next to me and kept me company at the Saturday night party. And I had no idea who you were. You were just some really nice lady who had taken a picture of me and Jeff Strand in the hallway. <laughs> and now I like punch myself in the face every day. I'm like, you were sitting next to Bridget Nelson, you doofus. <laughs> <laughs> And Allie and I were just talking about how you're going to have to like hide from us at AuthorCon because we're going to be up your ass. <laughs> be a little bit in your business next year. We'll just, like, we'll just like, I don't have a table at AuthorCon, so we'll just like, we'll hang you don't? out. Oh, oh fuck how yeah. do you not have a table? Tell Jeff to move the fuck over. <laughs> Make some space. <laughs> that's what he I'm does sorry. now right he's he your chauffeur he takes jeff strand takes bridget nelson to conventions <laughs> oh, i wish he was here right now <laughs> he's really busy today should we remind him that he has this to do because i did see him post on facebook saying he was super busy today so. oh he knows he already sent oh, me a before good. and after picture of what he looks like <laughs> good it's okay Bridget Nelson we're not here for him no we're not we're, we're really here not. for you <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah we are we really Poor are Jeff, he's like I've been doing this since 1996 I've published over 46 
pieces of amazing horror, comedy, young adult fiction, and nonfiction work. Thank you for having me on your podcast. We're like, yeah, that's nice. So Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> the guy himself. The uh, man. The legend. Bram Stoker, award winning author, Jeff Strand. Oh, yeah. Congrats, Jeff, in person. Thanks. Should I just hold up the trophy this whole time? Yes. If you want. Yeah. If Jeff, it makes why you don't you have it sitting behind you? Because it's downstairs. Oh, that's right. Well, you should have brought it. Mm. Yeah. If I were you, I would like keep it right there the whole time and occasionally while other people were talking. On my shoulder. Yeah, and- I would turn and I would like <laughs> lick it. <laughs> It's mine, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Strand, I don't know if you've ever had a chance to listen to this podcast. You're a very busy man, so most likely no. But thank you for agreeing to do this because you have no idea what you've said yes to. And I apologize in advance. Welcome to Mothers of Mayhem, the both of you. <laughs> we are so happy to have you. So but not as happy as they already have me. That's oh. that's right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> so my usual co-host is Christina. Christina was not able to make it with us this weekend. So we have the amazing Allie Sweet, who I know harassed mm-hmm. you, Jeff, at AuthorCon. We will be back again to harass you both All incessantly. Right. I um was in the intro telling a story about how. I passed you and Bridget in the hallway at the hotel, walked by you, got past you before I finally had the balls to be like, are you Jeff Strand? (laughs) (laughs) And you were like, yes. And I was like, I love love you. And then not knowing that this was Bridget Nelson, Bridget Nelson takes a picture of me with Jeff Strand. And I'm like, (laughs) now I'm like, holy shit, Bridget Nelson took a picture of me and Jeff Strand. And then I was so, had so much anxiety and felt so awkward about the interaction I had with you. I never stopped at your table because I felt like a total idiot. I spent the whole time. She said she was going to be at my table. I was so sorry. I was like, he probably thinks I'm the biggest nerd in the world. But now I'll be there. Now I don't. Now I don't care. I'm ready. <laughs> Next year, all bets are off, man. It's all bets are be off. Wild. All bets are off. It's going to be fun. That was oh, actually right. one of my favorite memories of AuthorCon because you were so cute. <laughs> saw him, you were like, oh my God, it's just. <laughs> Bless you. Bridget, like, he's not I so did <laughs> No. Honestly, I geeked out really hard too. I was sitting over with Tony Evans and Sean Burgess. So like their tables were like facing towards and I was just sitting there like staring at you and Lynn like back and forth just being like, just go, like just go over and say hi. Like it's not that hard, like just go say hi. I know how intimidating I am. So I am. You're so intimidating. You are terrifying, Jeff Strand. You are terrifying. I had that one interaction with you in the hallway and that was it. That was all I could handle. I told, it took me over 24 hours to get up the balls, just to walk up to Triana's table and make eye contact with him and not just the dog. And I never, ever was strong enough to ever come back around to you. (laughs) You were like, I get it. I'm scared to be at my own table. Well, <laughs> with people like me and Allie running around, you should be. <laughs> yeah, it, we were just talking earlier, too, like in the intro, we were talking about how insane it was that we were both there, but we didn't even know each other at that point. So we were both just like parallelly, parallelly, like slitting around, like yeah. not even talking to each other, basically yeah, living like a parallel experience. We never even, we were both Everything there, never high. even had a chance talk. to speak to each other. And now look at this. Look at this. Look at how far we've come. I know. Well, 
we are going to harass both of you with some questions. Some of them are for each of you. Some of them are more focused on one or the other. But first, since we do have both of you here together, this is an interesting little combo that we've got going on here because I've not had multiple authors on the show together who have not yet published a collaboration. And yet I've started thinking of the two of you almost as a symbiotic being. <laughs> like when there's a Jeff, there's a Bridget. When there's a Bridget, there's a Jeff. So you've pretty much become a package deal over the past year or so, at least in regards to conventions and your public appearances. How did this friendship and mentorship come to be? How did this all evolve? And how do I get in on it? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Bridget said she had never been to a horror convention before uh, Scares of Care. And so she said, you know, what are the best ones to go to? And I said, here's a list of all the ones you should go to. Here's a list of all the ones I'm going to. And she said, good, I'm going to all of them. Like, <laughs> All right. Guess yeah. what? We're best friends now. We're best friends now, and I'm riding in your car. <laughs> so, so, how did you know each five. other before? So, tell her, tell her how we actually like, like met. Like, well, not actually met, but like our first interactions. We met because I wrote the foreword to an anthology that she was in, and oh, so I, I agreed. The editor contacted me, so I wrote that, and then I saw her on Facebook spazzing out saying, oh my God, he's writing the forward to this anthology. <laughs> and so that really started it. She sent me a hardcover signed copy of it with her immaculate handwriting. And I said, you know, you should go to, um, I think StokerCon online because at the time it was just the virtual version. So she went to that. And so I think we talked in the virtual bars and then she just popped up at Scares of Care. And then I think every convention I've been to since then. Oh, wow. So you were not actually agreeable to this. It just kind of happened for you. Oh, I said here, if you want to, <laughs> here are the places to be. Not, never imagining she would take my advice. <laughs> that is so kind of you. <laughs> Hey, that's the way to do it, girl. You were like, I'm going to do this. I got this. <laughs> yeah. You're like, great. He has the list and knows where he's going. So, But then I'm she became friends with our, we have a mutual friend, Richard Dansky. And he wanted to, we've been talking to him about doing a uh, vacation in Asheville. And so I was like, Whoa. well, we like Bridget. Rich likes Bridget. Let's see if Bridget wants to go. And Bridget did want to go. So we did a quote unquote writer's retreat, which involved Zero, writing <laughs> and 95% just enjoying Asheville. But. That's awesome. That's sweet. <laughs> it was a, it was a team bonding. Yeah. These are two called team bonding. <laughs> That's awesome. So I know going through I read a whole bunch of interviews, Jeff, that you've already given because I didn't want to hit you with the same old questions. So I tried to find some things that maybe you haven't pondered yet. And one thing that I picked up on a lot was that you've said multiple times, there's never really been a time in your life where you didn't think about being a writer. It's right. kind of almost always been that internal calling for you. So I have this, this image of you on the day you were born being pulled from your mother's womb and being like, oh shit, I got a great idea for a story. <laughs> and story of kid who was warm and suddenly <laughs> pulled out into the cold, cool world. <laughs> he was just floating around in this nice, Everything comfy little great. dark ball. And all of a sudden there was light and noise and pain and chaos <laughs> Bridget based on your story collection within a bouquet of viscera you hit genre after genre after genre after genre so your brain also has to have been full of magic for like decades do you guys remember what your very first stories were I 
love fine to get like when you were you had to be writing when you were kids so what were your stories what was the first stories that you put together do you remember i can't go back to the first stories because i was writing stories like way way back because my mom was a bookkeeper and i would have to go into her office and like spend long hours there so she would give me the um paper spools that for the adding machines yes and I would write out a story on those but i don't <laughs> i'm sure they were garbage <laughs> as far as stuff that survives you know i have a story i wrote in fifth grade about how the devil got his horns and it's it's a terrible terrible story it's does not hold I up love it. my current standards, but. <laughs> but how did he get his horns, Jeff Strand? Oh, it was stupid. It was like red spray paint got everywhere and the horns stuck on. And it was, it, it's not a particularly well-told tale, but I think I got a good grade on it. I think the, I have a photocopy of it. I think the top is very inventive from my fifth grade. <laughs> So I don't, I can't go all the way back to the first stuff. I know that there were lots of Spider-Man comics that I drew and that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. I have stuff going back pretty far that, again, not top-notch material. I wouldn't try to sell it to people now, but. I just think it's so magical to see what, what people who have this stuff, because I could never do what you guys do. My brain doesn't work this way. I just revel in the the miracles that you guys put down on paper and then live my best life that way. So I, I, I can't even imagine. And I just, cause kids brains are so amazing that I just like to know what, what, what were you writing when you were a kid? I'm sure it wasn't, it wasn't Stoker award worthy, but I bet it was pretty freaking hilarious. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was hilarious from a standpoint of it being bad. Exactly. I, 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 I <laughs> it a lot of my stuff is comedies, and people would read them and say, "Oh, that's a good story." Like, did you laugh? Like, no. Was it supposed to be fun? <laughs> yes. So, I I wrote a whole fantasy series that I identified as a comedy fantasy series that no one else actually saw the humor element to. But oh my god, I want to read it. What I know, it? right? See, you're not going like, to tell no, us no tell us. never no i should i just should not have said those words <laughs> i don't think those exist anymore they might somewhere but... hey, oh he, has, he has some like old time stuff like written in his like little boy hand like, <laughs> like i saw it i know it's there yeah, you do that's amazing I would, okay, you guys, I wish somebody would just be like, you know what, I'm going to take all of this stuff that I have from when I was a kid, and I'm just going to put it out there and be like, I wrote this when I was 10. Here you go. Y'all have read my other stuff. Here's uh, what I was writing it. when I was a kid. I would buy every single one. <laughs> Me too. hundred percent. Bridget, do okay. you remember? Do you remember what you were writing? Like, do you have a first story that pops up in your brain? Probably so, Jinx. <laughs> Probably Jinx. First story ever. So I lived near all my cousins and we were all girls. Like we we're a whole family of just girl grandchildren. So we would um, write songs and perform them for our family. But the songs that I would write were stuff like eat your boogers every day. And then there would be all these lyrics. On the song. <laughs> or I would take that song. Do you know the song that goes like food, glorious food? You know that song? Oh my song? God, from Oliver. Yes. Yeah. Well, I turned it into turds glorious. <laughs> Not kidding. I still have like where I had written them down and we were performing them for my family. And I can only imagine what my grandparents thought as we were saying these songs. Look, if you had presented my children with a piece of art like that, they would have been like, this is genius. This is the highest level of comedy we have ever heard in our lives. <laughs> oh God. Ah, so yeah, that, that was the first time I wrote. I wrote music really, really like literary type of music it sounds it like great. it i am impressed <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> 
Allie, go ahead and hit him with your question. Okay, so I'm assuming you guys have both read work that the other one wrote. So I'm wondering what is Bridget's favorite Jeff Strand story and what is Jeff Strand's favorite Bridget Nelson story? Can I go first? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the actual, the very first story I ever read of Jeff's was not even a horror story. It was Kumquat, which is a comedy romance road trip adventure type story. And I loved it. Oh. That was my first introduction to Jeff and I read it in like 2014. And to this day, it is still my favorite <laughs> Jeff Strand story. If you haven't read it, you should read I it. I haven't read it. That's amazing. Pro tip. My other, my other favorite is um, The Writing Life. It's just, it's funny and it's perfect. And there's, I just, I love it. I've read it like four times now. So those are my two favorite Jeff, of Jeff's. Okay, sweet. And Jeff? I'll give two. The one I admire most is Jinx because oh. just, it is a take no prisoners, kick you in the face, you know, catch them level punch to the gut story. My favorite is just because it has got the most deranged twist ending imaginable. That's the first story in the book, Bouquet of Viscera's. So that, if you, which one would I read again, Auras? Which one do I admire the most, Jinx? Yeah, nice. I, that's fair. Yeah, we were talking about Jinx yep. in the intro and I, <laughs> I was talking about how I was reading it while my kids were at the pool. <laughs> I like shut the book and I wanted to chuck it into the deep end <laughs> because it hurt me. <laughs> but how like that is true horror because the world, the world be like that sometimes. Not everything. Yeah. Isn't it funny how our brains, even when we sit down to read horror, still deep down inside wants a happy ending wants things to go the way we want them to go wants some kind of level of mm, uh, validation oh, vindication. Yeah, yeah vindication yes thank you yeah. valley i had like several <laughs> endings predicted for jinx i was like okay at this point there are three different ways this could go they're all bad there's not going to be a you know sunshiny ending to this but there'll be something that you can latch on to. And then it's like, oh no, no. this is full on nihilism. Like, yeah. Wow. But <laughs> the, the part that is the most impressive to me about that story though, is you, like there is still closure. Like you don't get what you want at all. That's not no, what you want. It's not ambiguous at all. It's but just, it's completely. Sometimes kids, life sucks. Complete. Right. Yeah. Like, oh man, Bridget. Man, I, I I don't even know like what to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I know there's a part two to your question about what they like the best right. about your own work. So yeah. your favorite story that you've written, Jeff, and what was your favorite story that you've written for this? If you had to yeah. pick one, you can go, Bridget. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. The story that was the hardest for me to write was, and, and the one that I was like most relieved to finish was Jinx. Am I, is it my favorite story that I've written? No, but it's the one I'm most proud of, if that makes sense. Um, totally. I don't really know that I have a favorite story. I really liked the way that Cooked end, ended. But I don't really know that I have a favorite story. I, I mean, you can ask Jeff. I'm always like, I, I hate this story. I'm not even going to publish it. I don't think it's worthy of anything. <laughs> it sucks. I, I, I have a hard time. I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> please stop thinking like that. And please write me more stories. That is what I ask. The one that I had the most fun writing is maybe one you haven't even read yet. It's actually called, it's called Shits and Giggles. And it's in... Um, Counting Bodies Like Sheep by um, even the Evil Pu Cookie Publishing. And it, it's the mm -hmm. one I had the most fun. I mean, I literally like ripped that story out in like a day. Like I had so much fun, <laughs> but it is so, so twisted. <laughs> oh, I have that collection and I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Oh no, I'm going to have to pull it oh, It's fun twisted. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. You can this enjoy it and feel good about story. yourself when it's over. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's nice. That's different from the Bridget experience I've had. Yeah. Before. Jeff, you have over 46 published works. How do you, where do you even start like trying to figure out which one could potentially be your favorite? How do you, Usually I just sort of change my mind depending on when the question's being asked. Like the default answer for a while was sort of like a tie between Cyclops Road and Blister. But now I've kind of started using Allison as my default where it's like, I've never heard of you. Which of your books should I start with? So I was like, Allison. So that one has kind of risen in the ranks, but I don't revisit my stuff after it's published. So it's kind of hard to say. So I'm always sort of, defaulting to the more recent ones but um you know if i'm forced to lock down an answer i usually say cyclops road but i think for this one i'm gonna say allison just to change it up so why those two why do they resonate inside of you that way cyclops road's my most ambitious one so i think it um just it's my longest, which by my standards still isn't all that long, but it's, you know, my biggest story. I think it's got some of my best characters. I think Allison sort of, again, some of my best characters. I think it's one of my best blends of action, comedy, and just full on Grand Guignol horror. So I think it's one of the ones that best represents all the stuff I do in my writing. I love, uh, I love the whole Grand Guignol aesthetic to extreme horror. I was talking to Jasper Bark about this a lot too, because he has a tendency to go in that direction. I love, and it works so well with horror comedy because you can pull in a little bit of that more dramatic, that more visceral surreal <laughs> element or uber gore element to it i just oh i wish we could bring it back i wish we could bring it back to the stage and just have like gallons and gallons of blood just like just being like hosed out into the audience <laughs> i would buy so many tickets have you seen that. Little Dead, the musical evil dead i haven't seen that one yet is it like that Yes, oh! and I saw it, and I got tickets to the Splatter Zone, so I was oh! up front. And for the first half, it's like you get splat a little bit, but it's like okay, this isn't so bad. And then you know, there's the intermission, and you're like, yeah, there's there's blood, but it's not overwhelming. And then the final musical number, you would walk out just dread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds fun! <laughs> like if you went to That's see awesome. Gallagher. <laughs> It's oh basically strawberry sauce that they drench you with. So they warn you if you have a strawberry allergy, maybe don't <laughs> sit here. But it is. Don't sit here. Wow. You're okay. going to die. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Whoa. But yeah, I thought that I was doing okay. And then the final musical number <laughs> starts spraying everywhere. And you just, the people, if you're in the <laughs> back, they give you sort of the Gallagher style stuff where you can have a tarp to hold up in case anything splatters beyond the first three rows. But in the first three rows, like, hey, you you request it, you're on your yeah, own. You asked for this. You paid money. So it's not like corn syrup and like red dye. It's actually strawberry sauce. Right. It's a very it's a thin strawberry sauce. So it just <laughs> it, it at I the would be like I don't know if they mix <laughs> it for <other> performances, but <laughs> like, I, <laughs> Probably so it doesn't stain. I bet like fake, fake blood like stain. Oh, uh, red dye. Yeah, red man. Dye. They, don't want to, they don't want to ruin your clothes and corn syrup gets too right. sticky. It probably doesn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is not. <laughs> Someone Still. made their paycheck that day. Yeah, for sure. No. Right? You paid for it. So yeah, there is. There's <laughs> Evil Dead. I also saw something called Splatter, the music, or Splatter Theater, which it doesn't actually go out into the audience, but it's just a fully gory stage comedy thing. is that traveling or is that like in one place where is that i'm not sure i saw it in tampa but i don't know but it was called splatter theater it was really good oh my splatter god theater. i know that there's you know there's reanimator the musical is the stage yes. play there's a bunch of stuff that 
that gets a little wet. So, <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to have to search more of this stuff out because I, I, I wish I could have gone back to that, like the 1870s, 1880s and experienced <laughs> an actual like French Parisian Grand Guignol production <laughs> because, oh, it's like all of the best elements. Now, would they throw actual blood, like pig blood or something? Oh yeah. What do you think? Would it oh, be? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Buckets and buckets of buckets. Like the whole thing was to be as gory and as extreme as possible. And people loved it. I mean, we love it. Yeah. Oh, I would so take awesome. my money, take all of it. I want to yeah. be as disgusting as possible walking out of here. I don't know what's wrong with me. Honestly, I would want to be happen. in it. I'd want to be in the production, yeah. like doing it. Like that would Cut be epic, man. Yeah. <laughs> Slice me up, whatever. <laughs> if I don't get cannibalized, I quit. <laughs> so I really appreciate that you brought up Evil Dead because Evil Dead was really my first introduction to horror comedy as a genre. And it wasn't something that was really popular up until like the mid nineties when, and the later nineties when stuff like dead and breakfast and Leslie Vernon rise of the mask, Leslie Vernon, all of those things started coming out. So when you view that spicy blend of horror and comedy from like a superficial perspective, they feel vastly contrasting. But when you blend them together, they have this brilliant psychological impact on your audience. It's almost that roller coaster effect. Both of them create those neurochemicals that create like that pleasure, fear response, the anxiety of waiting for the punchline to come, thinking, you know, it's very similar in the psychological experience that you have. Can you guys talk to us more about your own thoughts regarding the blend of horror and comedy? And it's overall effectiveness and popularity is a genre. You want to this, start is a this is you a heavy start? hitter. I mean, I don't, <laughs> my story, there's no humor in the middle. <laughs> so I don't feel like this is a good question. For this. Yeah, but you're a fan of this guy as much as we are. So you enjoy it too. There's got to be something in that creepy brain of yours that's like, give me the haha. With all of the nasty. <laughs> well, I use the humor in different ways. Because, I mean, horror has been in comedy, you know, all the way back. And, like, my favorite line in any horror movie is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where Leatherface has sawed up the door, and then the cook is like, look what your brother did to the door. <laughs> 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 Laugh out loud funny because you forget you have forgotten that, you know, they still need to live in this house. So yes, I, there's a massive leather skin chases people with a chainsaw, but you don't ruin your, you know, you have to still respect your own home. <laughs> you son of a bitch, you broke the door. So it now is I gotta a, fix this shit. It is a hilariously funny moment that is completely accurate. It doesn't take you out of the movie because that's what he would say in that situation. And so, right. you know, it, They've, there's been horror comedy throughout and I use it in different ways. So I have, you know, some books that I are more quote unquote serious, like pressure is not a horror comedy, but it has a lot of humor in it because I wanted comic relief. I wanted you to better identify with the characters. And if characters are funny, then it's a little easier for the reader to get involved with them. And then I do just, you know, full on horror comedies like The Sinister Mr. Corpse or Benjamin's Parasite, where I'm trying yes. to be as funny as possible. And when I do short stories, I'll do stuff that's just pure, you know, full on comedy with a horror setting. So like Freaky Briefs, almost all of those stories, that's 75 flash fiction stories. And those are almost all overwhelmingly on the humor side of the horror comedy, because I can be as silly as I want. So I think there's, you know, a huge range, everything from just comic relief to just the fact that you know you can be really silly in a horror um setting and it works you know a lot of jokes even innocent jokes are you know if you think about them they're really horrible you know oh, yeah. my, my favorite example is you know the doctor calls 
Well, I've got good news and bad news. Okay, what's the good news? You have four weeks to live. Well, what's the bad news? We've been trying to contact you for the past three weeks. <laughs> it's a completely innocent joke. Yeah. I told that joke. No one would say, you depraved freak, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but if you analyze it, it is a horrific joke. And if you take it- Super dark. You know, one step forward and you just say, okay, well, let's really get into the fact that this guy has lost three weeks of his life. It's horror comedy instead it of just a, instead of just a regular joke. So that's a lot of what horror comedy is. You take a normal joke, think of the actual consequences and take it further. So it's okay. A guy falls down the stairs, but he's breaking bones along the way down, takes it into horror comedy. Same joke, just done a little bit differently so i do, think the two work together really well do you uh, you had mentioned how the use of humor it really allows us to connect with people on a more genuine level when it comes to the characters in the book protagonists antagonists either way if they're funny we develop affection for them on the other side of that do you ever purposefully and strategically use the placement of the comedy to kind of manipulate the intensity of the emotional response the person is going to, the reader's going to have when you do hit them with the horror? Or is this just like your natural vibe? Like it's just organic. It's a mix. It's a natural thing. I try not to put jokes where they don't belong. So you don't want a character who's being chased by a serial killer to you know have a snappy one-liner that pulls you out of the story, but you can use it, you know, for, um, you know, misdirection. I love to have scenes that are funny and you're like, oh, this is a funny scene. I have nothing to fear from this. Oh my God, what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, like the magic trick of look over here at the comedy, then wham, hit you with the horror. Yep. And, you know, I'm, I enjoy my villains who have sadistic senses of humor where it's like, it's funny to the reader and it's funny to me, but it's not funny to the characters. You know, they're not like, oh, this is a jolly good romp. They are horrified at what's happening, even though there's humor involved. And, right. and sometimes it's just because it's exaggerated. You know, Evil Dead 2 doesn't have that many jokes, jokes. There aren't like, hey, that was a witty piece of dialogue it's just the sheer over the top insanity of what's happening is what makes right? it so and so i like to do that sometimes too the horror slapstick right yes because that's basically what yeah. the ending of allison is is she's basically telekinetic she can't at the beginning of the book, she can't really control her powers, but what she can do is break your bones with her mind and she can't control it. But she learns, she practices and the end of the book, she's up against 50 guys and it goes her way. And it's not filled with that sequence is not filled with witty one-liners, but it is one middle-aged lady using her bone breaking powers against 50 criminals and so it ends up being funny just because it's so completely insane over the top. So you guys haven't read Allison yet. It literally has one of my favorite all-time endings of any book I've ever read. You, I think you'll both appreciate yeah. it too. If you haven't read uh, Allison yet, read Allison. <laughs> I can tell you right yeah. now, I am a middle-aged lady who wishes she could break people's bones with her mind. So... I mean, it just resonates so deeply inside me. I'm like, I wish I was Allison. <laughs> I am Allison, but I don't have those powers. Damn it. Time, you know, humor and horror, will, <laughs> a horror punchline works kind of the same way as a humor punchline does, because I'll go back to Bridget's story, Auras. It's not a joke ending. Oh, my God. But people will laugh at it. It's kind of. It's a punchline. It, it's it's a punchline. It's not you know a symbol crash joke, but it's funny because it's it, it is structured like a punchline. And it is. If you made a movie version of it, it would get a big laugh at the end because you just you can't believe that that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. you get that uncomfortable anxiety laugh. You're like, ha, 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 wow. <laughs> you know, I'm like, it's to be them. <laughs> and then there's no more story. That's it. <laughs> And then she's like, okay, punchline. 
and then you're awkwardly <laughs> laughing to yourself in bed. You know, time and left at last that famous Twilight Zone episode where he breaks his glasses. Uh, it's, it is one of the saddest things I've ever seen, but it also functions as a joke. You know, just yes. the irony. You're it's you laugh and then you're bummed out for the rest of the day every time you see it. But yes. so a lot of horror and just sad stuff works as jokes depending on how it's structured. It's so fun. Yeah, I felt go ahead, go ahead. I felt, I was just gonna say I felt that way a couple times in clowns versus spiders. <laughs> like like it, it shouldn't have been funny at certain times. And I caught myself laughing and I was like, <laughs> it's like Jeff, what are you doing? <laughs> you feel yeah. like you shouldn't be laughing you can't help yourself yeah. like i can tell where the funny bits were like for sure but then there were like some horrific bits that i was like why am i laughing because it's fucking funny man like i couldn't feel guilty love it i freaking love it <laughs> yeah, I'm <super> <laughs> Hit him with your question. I like your next question, Ali. Oh yes, my next question. I have two more, or two questions. They're kind of, they kind of relate. Oh, I lost my script, but um, one of them was, where's your favorite place to write? Like, is there a favorite place like in your house or like, do you like to leave the house? Like, where do you like to write? My favorite place to write is Jeff's porch. <laughs> <gasps> do you have a nice Sweet. porch, Jeff? Yes. When I lived in Tampa, I had a glorious back porch and it was wonderful and so that's where I did almost all of my writing then I moved to Atlanta and I didn't have a porch uh, so for four and a half long years like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> four and a half years I wrote nothing <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in Chattanooga so now I have a very nice office to write in but I also have a very nice screened in back porch so that is my favorite place to write. I like to, I've got a couple of chairs out there, but also a nice glass table. And I had a um, really tight book deadline and Bridget was going to two back-to-back -back conferences and it didn't make sense for her to drive back to West Virginia. So she just stayed for a few extra days and was like, well, I have to write. And you owe your, um, I forget the name of the anthology, but she owed a short story. So she was also writing. So she, we got to write on opposite ends of the glass table. So she got to see how great the back porch is. Now, of course, it's going to get worse. It, at When she was there, I had these portable fans. So you had like a fan blasting right on you. Now the fans aren't necessary. So now the temperature is wonderful. It's going to start getting too cold. So it won't be as great. But right now, the back porch is like an exquisite writing spot. You've had yeah, a her, her shark story was written in on the back porch and well they don't know about the shark story so oh shark story actually shark story. Allie made you a present jeff she made you a present yeah, i don't know if it's well. ready it's ready should i sign it like, yes yes yeah, she's gonna mail yeah. it to you <laughs> um, Eddie, I drew it from from the from the depth of, the depths of my heart. <laughs> it's a shark. Can you can With you spider me? legs? <laughs> I, I knew he made that answer up. I knew it. I feel like this was a test, and he just failed. Do you know why I drew you a shark with spider legs? In? I'm pretty sure I gave that as an answer in an interview. <laughs> you gave it as an answer in Candace Nolan Baker's dozen, dozen for like the thing that. What was the question? You the most. I think it, it was what scares the most. So I said a yeah. shark. With and he said <laughs> a shark with spider's legs. So then Marion had me draw one. You should. Yeah, see, I can't even do the rest of the interview now because I'm so traumatized. <laughs> hey. That's why this mayhem trauma is what we do. That's, that's our whole thing here. We, th we thrive off trauma over here. You should and Bridget's have probably been. like, oh, I would take that home as a pet, my beloved shark spider. <laughs> you should have heard the conversation that we had about where do the side fins go? Do they even have side fins or are the eight legs enough? And I was like, well, the fins are probably at the end of the legs, like oars. <laughs> But I, 
I'm over here drawing it like a lobster. <laughs> I did You're my not best. watching on YouTube. You're missing out, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this is some artistic genius. It's actually really well done. <laughs> we'll have to post it. We'll post it on the group. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I do remember my other question now. Um, my other question was, what's your favorite part of the writing process? Like, is it coming up with the ideas, your first draft, editing, who likes editing, whatever. Um, coming up with ideas for me is really difficult. I am not one of those writers who have a bunch of ideas in the pipeline and just waiting to get them out. That is not me. It takes me a while to think of stuff and I, I don't outline. So when I'm in the midst of writing, I can usually write the first half of the story really quickly. So that's probably my favorite part is just that flow of the first half of the story. The second half of the story, because I don't plan anything, it's like, oh, where is this going to go now? And then I sit there and ponder for days and days and days. And that's my least favorite part of the writing process. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, to I edit. Know. I mean, I edit Jeff stuff. I edit my, I like to edit. So that's, I like to do that too, so. Kind of I like to edit. I don't like to edit my own stuff. That's what I learned. I have a hard time editing my own stuff too. Yeah. So I have Christine Morgan does that for me. She she's okay. my editor. So my Hi, favorite part too. is the top to bottom proofread once I'm done with the book, where it's like the book is done. Now I'm just going to go through the whole thing beginning to end, but I can change anything I want. Nothing is locked in. So it's just it's done. There's not much to fix. It's like, okay, that that line could be a little bit better. Oh, there's a typo. Let me fix that. But I still have the total freedom to change anything I want. So that's the part I enjoy the most. The part I enjoy the least is in a traditionally published books, when I get the galleys, where it's like, okay, now it's been six months since you finished that book. Now you have to go through it again, but you can't change anything you want. You just have to find mistakes. But if you see a line that you want revised, you can't actually fix it. You have to live with it. All we're looking for are mistakes. Then you're just like, oh, this book sucks. <laughs> I think that okay, would so be really frustrating for me. Oh yeah, me too. I would hate that. I don't ever want to deal with that ever in my Normal, life. Because they send torture. you either a PDF or the book looking like it's published and an uneditable yeah. document right it's yeah. it's you're only looking for mistakes you're not looking to make it better you're looking for typos so and you then, have to like go in book. with a specific mindset like i would almost have to like do a pep talk for myself like i'm the oh, all yeah. right i'm not gonna i'm just gonna look for the <laughs> the, the grammatical stuff like, in the book yeah, just like just like pretend it's not yours. You'd yeah, have to this be is like, this isn't my work. Some idiot wrote this. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that would be <laughs> so much funnier. Not here, my but... story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's a question though. So, how much time, and is it the same amount, or is it a different amount of time? Do you leave between finishing, like up to the proofread stage, and then going back to proofread? Do you do it right away, or do you leave some time to like come back? I do it pretty quick on my self-published stuff. When I finish the book, I do my full proofread and then I send it off to beta readers. Okay. So you do it like right away, like same right. like week. And my beta readers are usually um, really fast. So okay. it's people like, you know, Bridget and Todd Clark and um, Donna Fitzpatrick and um, Jamie Lillichance and Paul Sonuria and Jim Mori. They just sort of, jump right on it yeah and so I'm getting responses really quickly and then I incorporate their feedback and then the book is pretty much ready to go because I also edit as I go I'm not one of those just get the first draft out and worry about it later I'm a no I want to make sure I'm happy with it as I go so by the time I'm done the book is pretty much done then by the time I do my final proofread I'm happy with it and then it goes to the beta readers and then once they're you know, once I've incorporated their feedback, the book is done. With traditionally published stuff, there's about a year turnaround. So for example, I turned in my latest book, um, It Watches in the Dark, earlier this month, which is September 2022. It won't be published until October 2023. Yeah. And I probably won't see it again until maybe June 2023. Oh my God, I saw, I can't wow. do that. I so it'll sit there for, that. I get you know, for 
a good long while and then it'll feel like a new book when I get it. Yeah, I was going to say, you'll, you'll like forget it. Like by the time you get it back, you'll be like, oh yeah, this one. Like, But then do you pick it up to do that galley read, that read just for flaws and look at it and, and be like, like oh, I could dark. have, I would have done this. If I could overhaul it now, it would be a totally yeah. different book. Yeah, because at that point ah! you'll be like, you'll be like nine months more advanced as a writer. Like, so you'll look back at that and be like, who gave this guy a keyboard? Like, yeah, oh, that, I that happens that. in right. rare cases when I have to go back and look at stuff like pressure. People consider that a pretty good book. You've nominated for the Bram Stoker Award, considered one of my best books. When I have had to go back through that book, it's just like, oh, I changed this, I changed this, I changed this, I changed this, I changed this. Yeah. And at some point, you just say, no, it's good enough, and people like it and not you know, worry about it because people like Grave Robbers One No Experience Necessary, which came out in the year 2000. I cringe like the entire way through that, but that's just seriously. You know, I'm not going to ever read one of my own books and say, oh, man, boy, did I nail this. This is, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> Why thing. not? You don't know I that. I have a freaking you know that. You might. genius. <laughs> well, you, you know, should, Jeff. You, you should, should especially when it yeah. comes to Crazy Ralphs, okay? Yes. Crazy Ralphs <laughs> is one of the best things I that's have ever. ever read in my life. <laughs> and there like are we had it read to us. We had it read to us. Sometimes or I am driving along in my car because I travel a lot for work and I have to drive a lot. And I'll just like I dissociate sometimes. And what brings me back is you standing in the front of that conference room going, because I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> I will never forget it. I laugh so hard. It's one of my favorite memories from that weekend at AuthorCon. It was. That might be my favorite memory from AuthorCon. Just because, okay. But think about it. Okay, like, Jeff, you're like, you know, you're pretty reserved. You're quiet. You're not like super in your face, right? And like, when I approached you at your table, I was all of those things. And I'm like, you're just friend and I love you and I'm buying all your things. And you were just like, okay, crazy baby. <laughs> That's great. And then that night, or well, I guess the next night, because I was like, was that Saturday night? Yeah. So the next night, and then you just come out with, with your like book and you're like, when I gaze at this price sticker, I see an infinite abyss of whatever, <laughs> darkness, and I'm filled with an overwhelming sense of self-loathing. <laughs> yeah, that story is almost an out-of-body experience. I've read it a couple, I've read it, I think, three three different times. <laughs> I've read it, I've yeah, listened to it so many times. Sort of, I've watched that video so many times. Uh, like, I pretty much know it by heart, probably. It's like, and that makes me want to kill God. But I can't kill God, because that would be crazy. <laughs> I, you know, I'm always, I, can't. <laughs> I have such, and I've already said this, but I have such admiration for folks like you who have these brains that can create these alternate realities that are so intricate and clever and brilliant. And you write these entire huge, long 300, 400 page books. And then at the same time, you can write something that's no longer than two to four pages. And it'll be one of the most memorable things that I have ever experienced in my life. And sometimes to me, that's even more incredible. I'm like, oh, you hit, you got me in less than like 500 words. And yep. I, I, I will carry this with me forever. I, think I, I have scars on my cheeks from laughing so hard that night. Like seriously, <laughs> like. You crazy, gave me wrinkles, Jeff Strand. Crazy Ralph is one of those things. You both have, you both, you both have stories on my list. Of course, Jinx and actually Spores is one of my. And I'm not like I like body horror, but I'm not huge on body horror. But Spores is probably one of my favorite stories from a bouquet of viscera. <sighs> crazy Ralph, even if I had not seen you read that in person when I read it in Freaky Briefs, which is my number four favorite read of 2022, 
I'm gonna, uh, she, she, she only came in one step above you, my friend. She's the number three. Bridget's the number three. You're right there at number four. <laughs> we got LaRocco, we got Paula Ash, we got Bridget Nelson, we got Jeff Strand. Y'all are bringing you rounded out my top four. <laughs> Nothing's going to change it now. <laughs> and underneath is Brian Keene, which I know he wrote Blood on the Page ages and ages ago, but there again, uh, I sing a new psalm, four pages, and it completely rewired my brain, broke my heart. So I just, I, it's a miraculous gift that you guys have, and I, I wish that I could have been born with it because you can do so much to somebody in here in such a very short period of time in so many different ways. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a super fan of short stories. Like really, like you hear a lot of people that kind of shit on them, and but they're so they really are hard. Like for me, they seem harder to do. Like you can sit down with a lot of time and write a long novel and whatever. But like to sit down and just like put so much like emotion and like whatever, like to elicit like elicit feelings from me, the reader, like as I'm reading, and just like these like short amounts of spaces. Like my top read, my top. I, I've decided I've I've picked, but my top read was Heather Miller's most recent collection. Oh, um, Tales My Tales Grandmother my, Told my Me. My grandmother told me. Yeah. I and I yet. good. Oh my gosh, Bridget, read it. Like read it. And I read a bouquet of viscera right after, which is a very similarly put together, you know, mm -hmm. book. So we've got, you know, a few stories, whatever. Couldn't be different, like more different the stories. Like the vi underlying vibe is like spooky scary and then like fuck you up and spit you out <laughs> scary over here <laughs> um, but like honestly like it would like bouquet of viscera would be like right there like if I had to like one and a half like my first and a half favorite read just like I don't know like it like it really climbed and I've read what like 70 books this year so far but like those two and they're the last two that I read and they were short stories like collections of short stories and like love that love oh yeah yeah well yeah. yeah three out of my top four are short story collections i'm just now realizing see? yeah, yeah. See? Paul they're Ash, powerful man Bridget, and jeff and uh, you know i just <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's my adhd brain but there's so maybe, much maybe it's me too. yeah <laughs> i like that i can get so much in one thing and just like a little thing and then the next thing you go to is like completely different and you're like sweet new thing <laughs> Do you prefer, do you guys prefer writing short stories or do you prefer writing longer stories or is that something that changes from time to time? I prefer For having me, written I, novels, but <laughs> short, like the stuff in Freaky Briefs, which is, makes no attempt to be anything but just purely entertaining. <laughs> something like Freaky Briefs is a lot of fun. Like Crazy Ralph, that's not, you know, there's no plot to it. It's just a funny, goofy story so stuff like that's a lot of fun to write it's challenging because you know it's like okay I need to come up with something that's going to hit hard in 500 to 750 words so usually coming up with the ideas is really difficult on the flash fiction but then once I do or it's like okay I'm going to do one of those you know crazy used car salesman ads and just take it way darker than anyone thinks then once I have the idea then it goes pretty fast so those are a lot of fun to write. If I had to choose between short stories or novels forever, I would choose novels, but I enjoy both of them a lot. Do you, I imagine there is more freedom in self-publishing because you don't have word limits. Do you, if you set up a deal or an expectation with a company that's going to publish for you, do you find the word limits to be constraining, to be a bit of a handicap in some situations? You ever get into a book and you're like, this could literally be 900 pages if I let myself keep going? Well, I'm, no, I've never had issues where I overwrite. I'm usually on the lower end. So if it's like, hey, would you write a short story between 3,000 and 5,000 words? Mine will always be 3,000 words. I'm not <laughs> one of those people who's, you know, oh man, I've written 7,000 words. How am I going to get it down? So I've never, you know, when I was writing for leisure, you know, I actually came in slightly under what it was supposed to. It was supposed to be 80,000 and mine would come in around 75 to 78,000. They didn't 
care. And my young adult books, the contract said 60,000 words, which is around where I write anyway. So I've never, as far as the word counts, I've never had issues where one, they wanted so much more than I was comfortable writing. I've never had a contract that said, you have to give us 160,000 words. It's always been about what I would write anyway. So I haven't had, you know, there is stuff that's constraining when you're writing for a publisher where, you know, there's market research and you can't do whatever you want. You have to, you know, pitch the idea and then you have to stick to the idea that you pitched. But as far as um, length, that hasn't ever been an issue. Have you come up I mean, against that yet, Bridget? Um, well, I mean, when I, when I submit to anthologies, I mean, you know, you have a word count and mm -hmm. a theme usually that you have to go with. So, yeah, I mean, a little bit. But um, I'm the exact opposite of Jeff. Like if there's a three to 5,000 word count, I'm always going to be at the 5,000 end. And usually I'm going to be well above the 5,000 end. And then I have to go through and cut. So I write, and I love writing short stories. I, I haven't written a novel yet. That's coming. But um, I think probably my preference will be short stories. I like writing short stories. But my short stories tend to be more almost like novelettes, novella type lengths. Uh, you'll probably notice, like in my my collection, I mean, a lot of the stories were longer, and that that tends to be kind of my my my, my place where I like to be. But um, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see because there is a novel coming, so I guess we'll see. Like once I start, once I start getting that figured out, we'll see what I think then. But as of right now, like I am, I'm a short story writer. I like writing short stories, so. When, you broke Marian. <laughs> when when is the novel when is the novel happening because you haven't given me more yet and i'm literally dying i we die every day bridget would die a little bit more and <laughs> and i'm i'm running out of time <laughs> when do i get when do i get the book bridget <laughs> it, if all goes well and if if it if it all goes well, it should be out next year. I don't know when next year, but hopefully next okay. year. I think with motivation, you need to pull that clip of, we're going to get the book, Bridget. Whenever you're feeling like you're not motivated to write, just play that, and then the fear will set in, and then you'll have a productive <laughs> Like, yikes, I better get some more work tonight. We'd be of service. <laughs> yeah, you need, like, you need like, a, like a boomerang of us just being like, <laughs> Tick -tock for my days my days are ticking i swear to god if i die before this book drops i will haunt you every day my gray hair grows back out before i die it i'll send you a picture being like the days are Rocking only getting shorter <laughs> back baggins can't help you now <laughs> But what they're saying okay, is that so, she what to do. So what? Exactly. So Jeff, what? Tell her. Tell her. It's for her. What own. about you, Jeff? What are you working on? I'm finishing up my first novelization, and I can't announce what it is yet. But it's for an old movie. Yeah. <laughs> but so it it should be fun, and after that will be many more horror novels to come. Do you and when the collab coming? When's the collab? I don't know. I'm a power hungry madman with collaborations. So. Yeah. When do we get the, the Jeff and Bridgie collab? Because I feel like it's inevitable at this point. Don't don't make me get, you know, that way with. <laughs> I don't know. I could never write anything like Jinx. I will read it. But I would not, you know, if we were collaborating on Jinx of like, oh, we need to pull this back. And Bridget was like, no, we're going for it. And anybody can't do it. You know that what? is, I, you, you do have distinctly different styles, though. I you do have distinctly different like styles. Hard. It's true. I was thinking about, <laughs> so when I was thinking about the question about the horror comedy and how you're like, yeah, it's pretty organic. It just kind of like comes. And then Bridget's like, I don't write funny at all. And when I, like I, a bouquet of this is obviously very fresh in my mind. I just finished it. But I could see opportunities in those stories where you could have put humor, like, and it would have worked for sure. 
and like especially like spore tell me uh, spore. <laughs> Right? But then like, I could, could also see even... Bridget being like, stop touching my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying I'm not saying give Jeff the bouquet of viscera stories and make him funny that I'm just saying your writing style mixed with Jeff's writing style. I bet there is a story there and you guys could definitely find it. I really think. And I would 10 out of 10 read it. We believe. We believe in you. <laughs> As I have, you know, clearly I'm, I've done work in the extreme side, but like her story shits and giggles. I would not write anything close to that. I enjoyed the story. I love the story, but that you would not see my name on that because I don't take stuff quite that far. Right. I will do stuff where you're like, that's messed up, but not that's really, really messed up. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you're now, like, my, oh my God. My line is quite a bit further back than Bridget's line. Which Bridget may not have a line actually, but. Who are well, your go-to authors, Jeff? Who do you yeah. like to read? If you just want to chill and read, who do you pull? I like David Wong, who does the John Dies at the yes! End. Yes! <laughs> oh, David book. Wong, this okay. Book is full of spiders. I yeah. love him. He's got a new one coming out uh, this month. So I've got it on pre-order. Oh God, I'm going to have to add that. What, do you remember what it's called? I'm going to have to add that to my TV. It's called, if you're reading this book, you're in the wrong universe. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Or something to that effect. He was oh, really okay. like my first mainstream introduction to the concept of bizarro horror because he had, a, it was like half cosmic, half bizarro. And I was like, what is this? I've never read anything like this before. So I, I just love him. No, I actually got to blurb John Dies at the End when it was a really small press book. I think I might have that one. It was oh, the commuted press it. version. So I got to blurb that. Then when he sold it to St. Martin's Press, they dropped my blurb from it. So Those sons of bitches. Uh, we don't need to I'm going to burn them down. Holding us back. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a terroristic threat. Don't come I was like, I was going to say, we don't talk about them anymore. But <laughs> <don't worry. laughs> Who's your go-to, no. Bridget? Who do you love? So you might be surprised. I actually, when I'm like just pleasure reading, I read a lot of like thriller and I love Jennifer Hillier and I love Karen Slaughter. Those are like my two favorites. Oh, you're a Karen Slaughter fan. Karen yeah. Slaughter, interesting. I okay. have a couple of Karen Slaughters because my friend Brandon Baker, who is a fellow book reviewer, just loves Karen Slaughter. He was like obsessed. And so I bought a few of hers, but I haven't been able to prioritize them yet because I just love you guys so much. My independent <laughs> PayPal that I'm like, oh yeah, I have that. It'll be 50 years before I actually read Fractured. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just keep writing books she goes pretty extreme she's she's fairly extreme for a more mainstream author like she is she's i think you'd like her yeah yeah i i just i just checked i have pretty girls and the good daughter on my want to read but i have not read anything by her yet she's good she's really good i get a lot of my influences from those two ladies too so it's like yeah okay i, I started with mary higgins clark of all people. <laughs> i read one I can read all it. around what? the town i read that when i was like eight years old it was freaking terrifying multiple personality <laughs> disorder kidnapping stolen identities like it was horrific <laughs> God bless me. It's like, and then VC Andrews. Woo! All oh, right. VC Andrews as a kid. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Thank you, community <laughs> library, for opening my eyes in so many ways. <laughs> well, all right, friends. We're going to take just a very brief break, give a quick loving shout out to Godless, and then we are going to come back and hit you both with the rapid fire. Four, four questions, four answers, no time to think before answering. We may or may not be lenient, but there are consequences. So hold on, we'll be right back. Hey, 
Hey kids, looking for a way to affordably access the best and wildest independent extreme horror currently in existence? Godless Horrors is the place to be. Go to www.godless.com to gain access to thousands of extreme horror and splatterpunk books from the genre's best and brightest independent authors. Godless Horrors offers every title in their catalog in a variety of formats to ensure compatibility with your favorite digital reading device. Strapped for cash? No worries. Godless has a fantastic collection of free titles ready for instant download, with other titles in their collection rarely exceeding three to four dollars. Again, go to www.godless.com or download the app and tell them what the fuck you're looking for. Come join the Godless tribe today. Forever delightfully deviant. Forever godless. <laughs> Jeff, you're just the nicest person. You're like, wow, this is... Whew, okay. <laughs> God bless you. I'm not going to... You ladies are cray. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh, I'm going to kill God. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. That's the show. <laughs> That's the show. That's what we do. Yeah. Unspeakable we just... things behind a dumpster. <laughs> yes. yes. That's right, yeah. Unspeakable I'm giving away these cars. That, just like that I'm is... giving away my humanity. That should be the new tagline for our show. Talking about unspeakable things behind a dumpster. <laughs> that is mother's mayhem right there. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> it's Jeff's work. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, they're the same. They're the same person, Allie. They're they're inseparable at this point. Bridget made it I that way. I <laughs> she's like hey okay. i bet you didn't know that you had a twin that you like only half absorbed in you know, here i am <laughs> that sounds familiar okay this is, it's really interesting it's really interesting because i am my whole job is i'm a mental health professional i've been working in psychiatry for almost 15 years and currently i um I'm a crisis negotiator and verbal de-escalator of violence. And so I know a lot about mental health diagnosis, all that stuff. But a lot of what we do on this show is talk about horror and trauma and the relationship between horror and mental health. And I haven't had the opportunity to have somebody who is more horror comedy focused yet. And so that was really challenging for me, Jeff, because I'm used to coming at horror with these people and being like, your book is fantastic. Now tell me all about all the horrible things that happened to you as a child, because obviously <laughs> <laughs> let's now let's process all of your adverse childhood events. And with you, I'm like, I got nothing. It's just fun and fantastic. And I fucking love it. <laughs> So I'm having a hard time, not just like fangirling over you the whole time. I, I had a really hard time coming up with my usual analytical questions. So thanks no for problem. that. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was my tangent. Okay. <laughs> He's like, oh, four God. questions, four answers. <laughs> All right, first of all, we're going to hit you guys with fun. Before we even go, you have to decide who's going to answer first. Jeff first, then Bridget. To answer first. Ooh, yeah. Jeff okay. Strand just got voluntold by Allie Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. Allie. Well, I'm going first. First, then Bridget. All right. All right. Okay. Question number one, no time to think. Like, zero time to think. Like, negative seconds. Okay, are you ready? No, but all right. I'll go. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter if you're ready. Yeah, okay, so I'm ready. So here we go. <laughs> if someone were to write you, oh, no, if someone was to write your autobiography or your biography, what would it be titled? 
Ra- raise <laughs> eyebrows. That's what it would be called. It would be called raise the unauthorized eyebrows. autobiography of Jeff Strand. Okay, Bridget. If someone wrote your biography, I really biography, feel like you could have be done better there, <laughs> Jeff Strand. <laughs> I would have thought it. I'm going to kill God. You raised the tension level too high. I was panicking. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll Stamped give you that. Up and then was like, give me a title. Um, and you were like, <laughs> so good. Okay. I thought it would be an easy someone... question. I thought it would be like, you know. What's your favorite much- animal? <laughs> has any, no. honestly, has anything about this last have hour you and a half been us? easy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get yeah, Bridget more time to think so she can come up with an amazing answer. No, I have, I have redirection, to I'm redirection, and distraction. That is not yeah. fair. And honestly, honestly though, this is one of the easier questions. So, okay, but Bridget, <laughs> if someone was gonna write your biography, what would it be called? All right, mine would be the dirty or derp. Wait, Aww, say it again. Yeah. Say it again. <laughs> what? The dirty or derp. The dirty or derp. Yeah. Oh, That's what cute. It Oh yeah, I like it. That's good. See, Jeff. <laughs> you only really had like two extra minutes to think about it than you. Like get it together. All right. Well, the next one's right up your alley, Jeff Strand, because you've already done YA. So I have children age seven and almost ten. How old is your are your littles, Allie? You have a niece and a nephew, right? How old are they? Yeah, I have a four-year-old niece and then a two-year-old nephew and a 16-month-old nephew. Okay, so we've got a big age range here. We're anything from like pre-preschool to later elementary. If I sat you down and put an explosive collar on your neck, Battle Royale style, and told you you had 30 minutes to write a book for our little tiny people in our lives, or the collar would explode and your head would blow up what would the children book be called and what would it be about it would be called the greatest zombie movie ever it would be a hastily scribbled down version of my already published <laughs> greatest zombie movie ever because with that much stress i need to just resort to something all <laughs> i would just do the cliff's notes version write it really really fast it's about high school students making a zombie movie it's a delight it is filled with laughter and heart and plot twists and i think they would all enjoy it very much my kids would be all over it yeah. they would be, be in it to win it they would be like heck yeah man brilliant yeah, yeah. that's yes. way easier than the biography all right. <laughs> i appreciate your head's gonna blow up mine would be called this is an easy one for me because mine would be called the grumble and it would be about my four dogs my three pugs and my saint bernard and i would oh, write yeah. a really cute dog story that's totally what i would write why would it be called the grumble? Because if you have more than two pugs in your house, it's, they're actually called a grumble. It's called a pug grumble. Like a and I'm like, grumble 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 pugs. Pugs. It's a grumble of pugs. Yeah. <laughs> a, a gr- oh my God. Is it because they're always like, so they're like, <laughs> <I can assume. laughs> with this in real life yet just that they're <laughs> ellie right now we just they're channeled, like, we just channeled like, our inner we, rumble of pugs if <laughs> we really go to author con we might have other things we need to do that weekend where ali and marion are not <laughs> oh, God. Oh, y'all got lucky last year you ain't gonna be that lucky this year we're gonna be like hey. <laughs> Okay, question number three. Question number three. <laughs> if you Allie, could be go. any character, if you could be any character in your book, who would it be? Any of the characters in Bang Up. No, you have to pick a oh, character. What? Which character would you be? I don't remember their names. So the main Me character. Me neither. <laughs> the main character the, in Bang Up. Okay. The dumb and, character in Bang Up. Okay, and wh- oh, why? Okay, because they're dumb. No, because it's a smut novel and they have a much better time with characters in my horror novels. They, they're okay. like, okay, okay, Jeff. okay, we're That's on the level. Good, good rationale. Solid rationale. I don't want to be the characters in my horror novels. They don't. 
<laughs> it was badly for them. I didn't want to do that. You know what? I, I wouldn't die. mind. I wouldn't mind being the forest demon from the haunted forest tour. I can't remember his name, but he was pretty lit. <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> He seemed to have some shit going on there. I don't know. Um, okay, Bridget, who would you be? You guys, I have a pretty sorry selection. Of yeah, you sure fucking do. <laughs> I mean, am I going to do my father or am I going to be? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I would probably have to go with um, Jennifer, the doctor from Political Suicide. Because okay, she Dr. Actually... Perry. And yes. Dr. Perry yeah. fucks hey. shit up. Okay. Yeah. That's probably yeah. who I'd have to pick. She's probably the <laughs> at least oh, she lives. No. Yeah, I was just gonna say she lives. She lives. Like, she lives. <laughs> but we're we're left with a really, really big question of like what the fuck is wrong with her brain? <laughs> is that is that like the pure deciding factor for you? Like I picked her because she survives. <laughs> Not because of who she is as a person, mm. but she lives. <laughs> Do, do you know who I would be? Do you know what character I would be, um, Bridget, if I could be any character in your story? <laughs> Floyd, obviously. Such an easy pick. <laughs> he gets to go live with Darcy and like live his life, the best life ever. Like Later, mushroom guy. If I could be any character from either of your stories, I would be Crazy Ralph. <laughs> I just feel like we're kindred spirits. And I would be the eel monster. Oh, from yeah. Invaders. <laughs> Which one? Which one? The main one? The main or one. Or I'm the secret the... option baby spawn one. Look, when it comes to <laughs> eel monsters, I am an alpha alley sweet. <laughs> I will always you know what? be the alpha if we're... eel monster. <laughs> If we're talking that story, okay, you know, the like creepy, <laughs> the creepy friend that like we don't hear about at all, but then is on the beach at the end. <laughs> that would be me. I'm that one. The one that just like pops up and is like, I'm glad you're at this party. I have an idea. <laughs> you're the one that's I'm over there on the beach, like, there's my idea. <laughs> Get a fucking water. Like, oh, on purpose. <laughs> I can't even remember her name, but you know what I'm talking about. Here's the most important question that we have. This is serious. It's very very serious. Serious All funny. No. Serious business. Okay. Jeff Strand. Jeff Strand. If you suddenly came across an angry Michael Myers in the wilderness, which trauma response would you default to fight, flight, or freeze? Right. he's slow i know Slight. in the movies people can't get away from him but he's he's pokey i think i could just kick his ass yeah but you know like you think you're good and you think you're like 10 steps ahead and then you turn around and he is like hey bitch but you didn't think you were gonna see me again and he's but like yeah, right he's there <laughs> I oh think, that's true you know for the in cinema he can do all this stuff i think in real life you just be like Dude, you are slow. <laughs> so, oh, <Pal>. so, <laughs> also, you... I would remind him of the continuity that he got his, his eyes shot out. In <laughs> Halloween two should still be blind. So, <laughs> okay, I'd okay, wait but Jeff, you walk can't walk into a tree and be done with it. No, but like, you can't sir, have it both ways. Been murdered, murdered twenty times. <laughs> no, but you can't have it both ways, Jeff. You can't be like he's cinema. Mike Myers, so I could beat him in real life. But if he's in real life, he has to have cinema Mike Myers eyes. That does not track. I don't like it. No, he got if he had the advantage of them not needing him not to be blind for the sequels. But in real life, it doesn't matter. So he would still be blind. He'd probably still be blown up too. So even more harmless. Yeah, I'm not scared of real life Mike Myers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. RJ Benetti, I'm RJ, sorry I disappointed you with my answer. It's okay. RJ Benetti basically was like, Marion, this isn't even a good question. <laughs> I was like, excuse me. I thought I was, who would you rather fight, Freddy or Jason? Ooh, Jason. Ooh. 100%. In hand to hand combat, Jeff. Yeah, Strand. 100%. Jason. Well, Freddy cheats. Yeah. 
Freddie was true. like, oh, you're a writer. Now your hands are keyboards. And I'd be trying to play them. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a lot of damage with keyboard hands, Jeff. I know you Not could. to Freddie. That's like a, well, I don't know. Freddie, I would start to hit him. Then he'd be like, you've got writer's block. And then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Freddie is literally the most terrifying of yeah. the like bad guys of that like era in my opinion like, I agree. like, like jason jason is literally nothing like i i i would like him like as a friend like i'd be like cool i'll <laughs> hang with you like whatever but like if i see freddie anywhere near this like i'm oh like <laughs> bye jason Voorhees right. has been to space ali he has murdered in space as he though, do, do we actually acknowledge that as existing as <laughs> an Look, actual look if it's going to be valid to my point, I will acknowledge it. <laughs> uh, I All right, I, Bridget. <laughs> Allie's like, mm, girl. Mm. We're going to have to table this for later, honey. <laughs> We're going to put that in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got opinions. <laughs> I don't care for that. Bridget, which one? Fight, flight? Oh. So I don't think it would be flight because my boobs are too big and I think they get in my way and I tried to run away. Oh, I so this, I yes. think <laughs> I think it would have to be flight. I would brain me by that bitch. <laughs> but like, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down in blaze of glory. Come at yeah, me. me too. Michael. Would you fight it? Is that what you do, Marion? You'd fight? I will fight a squirrel if I have to. <laughs> I will always take the I'm like the least non-confrontational person in the whole world. But deep down inside, I wish I would just be like, yeah, I would fight Michael Myers and I would mess him up. Okay, kick his ass. He's toast. <laughs> No, honestly, uh, I, I, I probably feel like would I would do that. And too. I would be like, okay, I'm going to use some active listening. So, what I really need is for you to tell me how you're feeling right now. Where is all of this intensity coming from? Can we identify the trigger here? Let's identify the trigger. We'll drain the stress out of the situation. And then. Meanwhile, he's like draining you. <laughs> I want to say I would fight, but I I would run. I'd fucking get the fuck out of there so fast. Here, I feel if I'm, if I'm being honest. I might have I'm to switch kidding. this one up because Jeff had Freddy or Jason. For you, I'm going to do, Bridget, uh, alien or predator. Or which I'd rather fight? Like, what's the question? Yeah, if you like, had to try and fight. And this is hard. No, are we too. going up against the queen or are we going up against predator? And if it's predator, are we looking at like the old predator, like the the one from the newest movie, or are we thinking like Schwarzenegger predator? I like the Schwarzenegger predator, but I would probably have to go against predator. The idea of those things like attaching to my face, like I just got a claustrophobia. No, I I would probably have to go with predator. Yeah, okay. I saw a little too no. hentai for me as well oh. yeah <laughs> fuck you predator can't... so hard <laughs> there is no... he can be invisible like are you fucking kidding me he can... alien can suck on my face and i could still get away potentially but i can't fight what i can't see god damn well no i mean the well all you have to do is roll around in a bunch of mud and then the predator can't see you so then we can't see each other and we're just a fuck, like just waiting till one of us can see the other or we die from like exposure. Like, no. Yeah, I mean, still though. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. Although, 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 there, because we're females, us three, um, there is risk of being impregnated by alien and that is actually more terrifying to me. Hello, that my honey. Dying from, like, Hello, my darling. Like, I was you're not impregnated ball. by alien. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember that scene from Spaceballs where the alien pops out of the guy's stomach and does yeah. the hello, my honey? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
This has gone completely off rails. Oh, uh, we've gone off the rails. Fun. Apologies. <laughs> like just now, now we're 23 minutes in, it's gone off the rails. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff Strand. We love you very, very much. <laughs> and we really appreciate you sitting through this nonsense with us and answering all of our questions and letting us pick your brain. So, I know you both mentioned that you do have things in the works. Do you have anything coming up shortly that you would like to highlight and get the word out about? No, um, I think Freaky I, Bruce, which is new enough that it's not me just like reliving past glories. It's still a pretty new book. So if you want to read Crazy Ralph's Used Car Emporium, it is one of the 75 stories contained within Freaky Briefs. <laughs> I'm going to buy it immediately after we hang up with you. I am I so excited for this. Downloaded it the day it came out. I hadn't even finished the entire thing yet i probably was barely halfway through the collection before i was like this is in my top 10 like there's no way <laughs> around it it's fantastic i love it I cannot recommend enough <laughs> and i believe if you are a kindle unlimited customer it is zero dollars for those who are right. Uh, subscribers. So it is 100% worth the download. You will not be disappointed. And so Bridget, you have something potentially coming next year. That's exciting. Do you have any smaller projects or anthology contributions coming up anytime sooner you'd like to hype? Um, I have three chat books coming from Jack's Head Press. Should be <gasps> hopefully exciting. Year. Yeah. And um, like I said, then I, I guess I'm allowed to talk about this. <laughs> the novel that I'm writing is going to be through Mary San Giovanni's Tempest Line through Thunderstorm. Oh. And I am going to be in the new Evil, Pub Evil Cookie Publishing um, anthology. I, it's called Dead and Bloated. And that's my shark story. Nice. <laughs> okay. It's called Going <laughs> And I, it was written mostly on Jeff's porch. So, um, it's messed up, and then also, oh, that's <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> it's messed up. Excellent. Oh, it's messed up. Yeah. And then Jeff and I both have um stories in an anthology that just came out, um, like uh, last month, I think, in August. It's called A Woman Unbecoming, and it's kind of dealing with um the whole Roe versus Wade thing and <gasps> like righteous mm. revenge and righteous anger and that kind of thing. So, it's, it's a really good book. So Everybody should check that out too. Oh, is there actually right revenge family. though, Bridget? <laughs> like, please, please don't kill me anymore. You in a book full of stories, we've got to get at least one that has some good like vindication at the end. <laughs> if uh, people would like to contact you, number one, do you feel comfortable with that? Number two, if so, where is the best place for them to reach out to you or to find you to follow along with your shenanigans? Go ahead, Jeff. It's www.jeffstrand.com. There's a contact page that has all my social media. And if you want need to email me for whatever reason, that's there too. So awesome. Bridget. <laughs> My website is woefully outdated, but you can reach me there. Same thing. Um, it's BridgetNelson.com and um, all my socials are there. You can contact me through their email. So everything's there. And for more information on both Bridget and Jeff, please come join us in the Mothers of Mayhem official Facebook group. On that Facebook group, you can find links to the mom merch store. Yes, we actually have like stuff uh ultimate fan community reading soundtrack playlists which were all built around specific independent horror subgenres, and it is a lot of fun and i'm constantly updating them especially the ones on spotify our community group provides exclusive info content and giveaway opportunities plus so much more as always please feel free to post your questions comments uh memes of my mortal enemy zach baggins guy that guy uh and finally 
thank you once more to singer songwriter amigo the devil for allowing us to use his song hungover in jonestown as our theme again one final time we cannot thank you both enough for doing this we were so excited to talk to you today so we apologize if our excitement made us a little overly giddy because this has been an absolute blast for us you are both splendid and so tolerant of our ridiculosity we <laughs> love you so much <laughs> i bless you for doing this and until next time oh ali you get to say the the classic closing line until next time go raise some hell children and make your weird book mamas proud. Life is a joke, and death is the punchline. Oh, la, 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 la.